and when we launch a regional Latin America report, we have in almost every country of this a communication focal point. We don't have that in Italy. For that reason, for us, it was more difficult to get that information spread. And for that reason, from the very beginning, we started to say we did something like this. To be three days all together in one city, for instance, discussing and sharing with you some ideas. So in that sense, I, I am only saying that, yes, for us it was a particularly difficult challenge, and we are working on that. We are still working on that, because uh, if we think that the report is done once we launch it, we are wrong. The process starts once we launch it, okay? It's not the end of the process, it's the beginning. So we are working on that. So what they try to do is make sure all these figures are again comparable, that they were professionally gathered, and that when you release them publicly, all the numbers from different countries are being you're comparing apples to apples. But what I'm describing, that will take you a year or two or three, often. So by the time that data comes out, it's old. Now we're in the development business, right? So one of the things we track is poverty, um, as you would expect us to. And we get many complaints and not very sympathetic to them. Um, you know, I'm not telling any secrets here. The governor of Brazil has complained publicly um, under Lula, uh, the governor of Morocco, because we come up with a number and we say, this is your poverty rate. And, and, and the press plays it up and says, mm -hmm. the UN says this, and the government is claiming that. Well, the government isn't wrong. Um, you know, the, the government is saying in real time, this is what we estimate the poverty rate is going down in 2012. And our figures go back to 2010 or 2009 because they have to in order to be able to compare them universally. But if you are actually having significant progress, another example, which is actually pretty interesting, was on the gender inequality index. We had a, a very kind of angry complaint from the government of Rwanda, which has actually made it a um, priority um, to increase the representation of women in parliament and women in public life in general in the last five years. And I think the number of women in Parliament has something like doubled or tripled in five years. So if our data was only two or three years out of date, it underestimated that by half, and that was part of our indicator. And they said, you know, you're selling us short, and you're, you're not being fair to us. You know, so that, you know, this is kind of inherent in the business, and it's always a trade-off. National figures are more up-to-date, um, but they're not necessarily being gathered or used by the same criteria that are used they are intended to express real concerns that people in that country or the region already have. Most of the expertise that it draws on for the report, the researchers, the writers, and so forth, are from that region. Mm -hmm. And the idea is to make it a tool for change within that region. So as we talk for the rest of the session about the report, I mean, I would like to put out front, uh, I'm speaking to you not just in my capacity wearing my human development report hat, but I'm a career journalist by trade. I've now, it's formerly, and even former, former, but it's now 10 years, but I've worked in this, in Latin America and the Caribbean as a correspondent. Uh, and I know the area reasonably well. Um, but, it, but more importantly, I know how you guys operate because I was one of you for a long time. And, and you know, I'm very sympathetic to all the criticisms of the press release, and I can just say in our defense that Pablo and I and others have fought some uh, battles, won some, and lost some, trying to make press releases in the UN smaller. <laughs> it's, it's, it's never easy. But I will say one thing that I, what was interesting about this round of criticism, I reviewed before coming down here the actual press coverage that this report received when it was first released in February. And I think we would all agree quietly that press release could have been tighter, could have been stronger, and all the rest of it. All that said, that press release was picked up by every major international news service in the world, um, pretty much following the lines of it. I mean, it was even carried in, it was carried in SABC in South Africa, it was carried in newspapers in Thailand, it was carried all across Europe. Um, and the, it, you, we can get into why it was a somewhat simplified, you know, necessarily perhaps oversimplified, message, um, but that it was 
effective, and I'd like to, at the end of the day, that's the that's the measure of, you know, was it used, and did it say what the people behind the report hoped that it would say, and the news stories, and, and by and large, it did. And I'd like to talk a little bit about why that is, and what that means, and whether that was just a one-shot thing. But just going back a bit, what what makes this a human development report? I mean, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a report about crime and the Caribbean. What, what, what makes that any, you know, distinctive. Um, the human development, and you raised a perfectly uh, reasonable question. I mean, human development sounds like a fairly bland and squishy term. I mean, you know, we're not talking about animal development or mineral development. Um, what, what's, what's that mean? You have to understand the context in which the, the philosophy, and it, and it is a very well-developed philosophy of human development, when it first came onto the scene at the end of the 1980s, the first report came out in 1990. <clears throat> there are a lot of people involved, but the two key people was the original editor who was hired for this purpose, a guy named Abu Buhar, who was since deceased, who had been the uh, finance minister and planning minister of Pakistan. He was a very distinguished economist in his own right. And he was also a very close friend of another well-known economist, the Marquis Sen, who went on who went on to win the Nobel Prize in economics. And, and, and as it happened, Sen is from India and he's from Pakistan, so that was sort of an interesting collaboration. And both of them were extraordinarily frustrated because they were developing economists and they came to the developing world. And at that time, it was all about economic growth. It was all about GDP quarterly growth. As if that was the be and all and end all of development. And this guy, Mohammed Buhar, had been the finance minister of Pakistan, where they had had good economic growth. Um, but he felt, I mean, you, you can quote his own writing, it's much more eloquent than I could possibly be. But he said he felt like a fraud when he was going to these World Bank meetings and was lauded about his great achievements in development. He said, I would go back home and I would see that we hardly educated any of our school girls. Um, we had terrible poverty in the rural areas. Um, we had an elite that was doing very well, but 80% of the country wasn't really sharing in this group. And yet, this isn't measured anywhere. It doesn't show up. You know, the, when the World Bank comes out and says, you know, statistics, we're starved. But I actually don't think we're doing very well at all. And so he and Amartya Sen put together this human development report, which is best known for its human development index. And the human development index is really a very simple idea. Um, but it was intended to actually combat, you know, in a way, the tyranny of World Bank and IMF economic growth figures by coming up with one simple number, which would include income, but also included health and education equally. So it was, had three parts to it. And why those three things? I mean, there's a whole philosophy behind it because they believed, as many people believe, that <clears throat> development is going to be about human capability. That's the term they use. It's not about abstract, like how much money you have in your bank account. Um, if you don't use it um, to take care of your family, to educate people, have a good house, you know, in, in participate in society, what's the point? You can extrapolate that at the community level and the national level. So that's what the prefix human meant. You know, it was, it was human development as opposed to economic development, understood narrowly. So the HDI, the Human Development Index, was developed so it would have those three things equally. But the idea was to send a signal that actually once you did that, you would find that there were a lot of countries that actually had pretty high income, but actually weren't doing that well in health, in health and education. There were other countries that had very low incomes, and in this hemisphere, Cuba was the most um, interesting example that had very high achievements in health and education, but their incomes were very low. So, the, you know, Cuba in the World Bank rankings came down at the very bottom, almost. You know, it was down there with the, most, the poorest country, Haiti and Cuba, were at the bottom of the, of the rankings of the World Bank. But when you did an human development index, all of a sudden they were at the top near, you know, next to Pablo's own country, Argentina, which was, you know, much more developed country economically and had a long history, of course, being educated. So it was, it, it was developed to send a message to people and to policy makers that there's another way of kind of trying to figure out how you're doing in comparison to your own past, how you're doing in comparison to your neighbors, how you're doing in how you, whether the money and so forth. Almost every country defines literacy differently. What, what is literacy? You know, you know, can you read Shakespeare? Do you know how to write your name? I mean, there's, all, there's different ways of looking at it. So UNESCO, the UN agency in Paris, has been the world compiler of statistics for literacy. And what they do is they analyze the criteria the country uses 
And what they try to do is to make sure that it's consistent. Um, and if the country is using criteria which is not an international standard, either the data, they can correct for that data, or they'll go back in touch with the country, and they will say, well, you know, literacy now means reading at a secondary level, or whatever it is, and you have that information. You know, so that often the raw data you'd be getting from a government, even if they would give it to you, is going to look very different from the government, from the data you would get that's sourced to the government when you get it from international agencies. And again, it's not always because they're trying to hide it. Um, it's, it's often because they actually need that technical interaction with these specialized agencies in order to have figures that are both reliable for their own countries, but also they're comparable. You know, so you can look at you know, how St. Kitts is different from Virginia. Yeah. If she's been, you know, physically abused by a by a partner, um, it's different if it's a stranger. Typically, yeah. she actually has to press charges, yeah, and they've changed. She, and, they've, yeah. and, and one of the reforms that's been put into place in a lot of places, including New York City, New York State, is that that's no longer the case. So if the, the police can determine independently that a crime has taken place, and even if the woman says, "No, no, no, I don't want you to go after him," whatever like that, it doesn't matter what she says. I mean, just like any other crime, they can just proceed on their own. Yeah, and that is made. We're trying to put together an initiative with all the governments and with all the countries to make sure that we have a platform to promote human development. And uh, after this workshop, we, we always thought about some kind of engagement with civil society and with other actors and stakeholders in the different countries. But it didn't have really a shape until, uh, until yesterday, maybe. Because uh, what we were thinking, this, this workshop was about basically about citizen security and not about our work with the Human Development Report on citizen security. But looking at, the, looking at your work, looking at uh, the discussions, thinking about the regional uh, the regional uh, range, the regional possibilities that that a group like this has. We we were thinking among us about how how we can include some activities within that project to try to set up some kind of. Uh, uh, democratic dialogue that would include you and that would in a way foster things like the ones that we have been talking about. about we have been talking here about accountability, we have been talking about social progress, we have been talking about, uh, about a network that makes sure that information about development is available, that it is used correctly, that it can help you in your work. So uh, the, this is something that, that we are putting together. It might take us a few more weeks to, to organize our thoughts, but we don't want to lose the momentum of this meeting. So uh, basically, the idea was to share that with you and maybe think about how we can stay in touch I don't know, I, I, I told Wesley that he's my godfather in Tutu. <laughs> because on the, on the first day he started talking about the tweet and, and out, of, out of his presentation I decided to go into the tweet and then I saw that several of you are, are really active in the tweet. So that made me think uh, about, well, uh, Thinking about yes, the, the changing face of journalism and this new possibility and how technology has changed uh, your work and our work. Maybe we can think about putting something together like in the short term to make sure that that we can have a relationship with you. Mm -hmm. And it can be for the purpose of this regional initiative. But also to reinforce something that, that Bill was saying, which is that you can count on, on us. I mean, we, if you need information, if you need uh, a feedback or something that you are writing, you can always call.